hey hello welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Shelly and today I am doing a tag for the first time in a little while <laughs> so I saw um, Dia over at Novel Idea do this tag uh, and I do believe it's a tag created by Jack over at Spread Book Love. Um, I could be wrong about all of the names and things, but I shall leave all the information uh, in the description box. So if I've said the wrong thing, it will be down below. <laughs> um, so the tag is called The Evolution of a Reader Tag. And uh, I was just so interested in hearing about Dia's like journey uh well, well evolution as a reader but I was like thinking to myself well how is my evolution how is how have I evolved since, since I started reading so I thought let's do this tag and find out together so there's only like four questions so hopefully unless I do a lot of waffling which could happen, let's be honest. Um, it shouldn't be a too long of a video and you should be able to, you know, relax and don't hear my voice and see my face. Um, I am very much making fun of myself right now, so that's fine. So, you know, let's just get into the questions and see where we end up, shall we? So, question number one, what you read. How has your taste in books evolved? Ooh, well, when I started reading, <laughs> I read picture books, um, <laughs> which was just basically children having adventures. And then I started reading Nancy Drew books, so mystery books. And from that, I, I mean, I took long breaks, but then, Harry Potter came along and I think I was like drawn into that and after that it just kind of escalated into anything so basically I've always kind of been reading like mystery fantasy um kind of books and I do still enjoy those very much those are probably my favorite kinds of books I do like I do like a good fantasy mystery adventure thing. <laughs> As I grew up, when I like got into my late teens, um, the thing everyone was reading like around me was like chiclet books. And I wasn't really into it. Anytime I would pick up a like chiclet kind of a book, um, I would be bored so fast. It was like, snapped my fingers and I was bored because there was no magic. <laughs> I missed the magic in it. Um, so when I eventually found magical realism um, rom-com books, they became a lot better. <laughs> they became a lot easier to read, let's say that, uh, and a lot more fun. Um, but it took me a while of reading different kinds of like chiclet rom-com books before I actually found books that I enjoyed in that genre. As far as like the types of books, I still kind of read the same. I, I mean, I go anywhere from like middle grade to young adult to new adult to adult to, I don't know, do I, am I missing any age gaps? <laughs> as far as like the age gap things, I read any book that sounds interesting. I have recently started reading a lot more like high fantasy and adult fantasy and stuff uh, like in the recent years. I didn't read that as a kid. I did read some but it was just too heavy for me then and I, I didn't, it was just so many words that didn't make sense. Yeah, they were just like, uh, it's like if you go on a long walk and you don't end up anywhere, you're just walking in the Sahara Desert and you see, you don't see where you started from and you can't see where you're going. That was basically what fantasy, like big fantasy books were for me as a child. Um, like YA fantasy and stuff, that was fine. That was totally fine, that's always been fine. <laughs> Question number two, how you read. Has the format of your reading changed much? I wouldn't say so because uh, 
I've always like read physically. I've always read like paperback, hardback, doesn't really matter in that aspect. Um, I have tried reading ebooks, it doesn't really suit me. It makes my eyes go all wonky and reading ebooks and well in the ebook format, it generally means I probably won't like that book. Whether the book is good or not, doesn't matter, but because it makes me so tired and like gives me headaches and stuff, it just means that I probably won't read it. So to give a book a fair chance, I try not to read ebooks. As far as audiobooks, I did like when I um when I was like in very early school. <laughs> When I was in like first and second, maybe third grade as well, but mostly like I think first and second grade, I used to go to the library at school and I'd pick like audiobooks that had a physical book or I'd pick a physical book that had an audiobook rather. And I would follow along on the audio. I would listen to the audio and follow along the text. And this was basically just when I was like progressing into from like children's books into more adult books let's say and a lot of the time it was just to learn how to pronounce the bigger words the bigger words that you didn't really use in everyday language <laughs> at least I didn't as a six-year-old seven-year-old uh, Nancy drew in all this glory and stuff but the the wording in Nancy Drew is very, very easy, even if I was reading it as a four-year-old. Yes, because I was reading Nancy Drew when I was like three to when I was five or six. I don't have a Nancy Drew books anymore. I really want to get those. Um, but uh, this year I have like had a challenge for myself to listen to audiobooks. What I've found is I can't listen to an audiobook of a book I haven't read previously. Um, I just stop listening and then I have no idea what the hell is going on. So books I have read, preferably more than once, are the ones to go to when it comes to audiobooks. Because if I stop listening then I still know the story and I will know. Like my brain would insert whatever I've missed because I stopped listening. That is the attention span of me. <laughs> so yeah, I can't listen to new books or books I haven't read, but it's worked so-so as far as the books I've read previously. I don't really enjoy listening to audiobooks. I much prefer, like, if I go out and about or do chores and stuff, which is what most people do when they listen to audiobooks, which is probably why I stopped listening. I much prefer listening to music and like singing and dancing along to that even if I'm out and about and making a total prat of myself. I don't care. Um, I much prefer music over audiobooks so yeah I think it's just not for me. <laughs> Which is fine, it's not for everyone. Question number three, how much you read? Do you read more or less than previously? When do you read? has how often you read changed. I've always kind of just read whenever. When I was at school I usually just read before bedtime and then fell asleep. Very rarely did I like sit and cuddle read some things <laughs> uh, just because I had the time. On summer breaks and stuff yes then I would just pick up whatever book and sit and read for hours on end. I definitely read more now than I used to do and I think that's just like a natural progression of when you start reading a lot but the more you read the faster you read so you're just gonna read a lot more in the same amount of time that you did before. Now I've always been a fast reader that was always one of the things that I was so proud of at school whenever um, we did like those kind of comprehension tests. I was always like Speedy Gonzales and it was, yeah, that was my go-to achievement. <laughs> so I've always been a fast reader, um, but I think, I, I guess it just depends on what kind of book it is, because some books I read so slow and some books I just speed through. 
Um, so I guess the mood and what kind of books it is. I do kind of decide that as well. As far as when I read, I mean I've always like read a bit of whenever but mostly it was just bedtime. Now I read whenever there's like five minutes. <laughs> I very rarely used to take a book with me any, everywhere. It really depended on where I was going um, would be the case of taking a book with me or not. Now, I don't always take a book with me wherever. It really depends on where I'm going still and if I know I'll have like time to spare but usually there is a book in my bag. I can't really read while like in the car or on a train or, or like anything like that and if I'm flying I fall asleep so it's not the best time for me to read on transportation if I'm like say sat in the airport waiting for the train to board and stuff then I will have a book with me and read especially if I'm traveling on my own or if I'm like in the doctor's office or something like that and I know it's going to be a wait I have a book with me so I do really read wherever whenever and let's be honest I spend most days just reading and if I could spend all day reading and actually get paid for that, that would be terrific, but that's not the case. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't say no. Hint, hint, someone paid me to read all day. <laughs> Question number four. How has Booktube changed you as a reader? Well, I watched Booktube for many, many years before I actually started my own channel. And just watching like other booktubers talk about books, but mostly just watching people rearrange their bookshelves and showing their what kind of books they have, or which books they had, um, made me buy more books <laughs> than I, one, had money for, and two, had space for. But now I'm just kind of like, you know what? As long as the bills are paid, as long as I have food and stuff, I'll spend all my money on books. Who cares? It's my money. Um, <laughs> it doesn't happen all that often, but yeah, no. Uh, and now I'm more like, you know, there will be room for the book. Books will always fit somewhere. And if I have to move to fit all the books in, I will move to fit all the books in depending on whether the cats agree or not. Yes, the cats are the boss of me. I mean, booktube, social media in general, booktube, bookstagram, whichever, both, most, yeah, booktube has definitely introduced me to a lot more books than had I just, you know, walked into my local bookstore and, like, perused the shelves there, because there are not a lot of books on the shelves in my local bookstore. Um, it's very much the most popular at the time kind of a book, which I get. But you know, sometimes you want the odd, not the odd classic per se, but I mean that too. Um, but the odd one out, you want the book that no one's talking about and you want to find your like your golden gem be the book that you talk about booktube has definitely well made me buy more books <laughs> cuz i really enjoy having the all the shelves with all this like books and i mean i need to organize the books on my shelves cuz the these behind me here are double stacked yes so i definitely need to organize them again um, but I really enjoy having like loads of bookshelves just full of books. It brings me a lot of joy in life and um, sometimes just sitting down and like looking at all the books that I've read just brings me like inner peace. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely introduced me to a lot more books than I would have like heard about otherwise, which I'm like, I'm grateful for, but I'm also like, I want all the books. And how will I have time and money to read and buy all these books? Hopefully I'll live for a very long time more. So I'll have time to read a lot more books. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that was kind of coherent, I guess. Um, and not too much waffling. There was probably a lot of waffle. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye-bye.